Today we are looking at more top Duelist Cup builds, and today we're looking specifically at Labyrinth. Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. And on today's episode, we are taking this Labyrinth build and seeing how good it is in Ranked. Uh, and more specifically, just giving my overall thoughts on a topping Duelist Cup build. So let's quickly do the card by card and the explanation for each of these cards. So starting off with the Labyrinth Monsters, we're playing three Ku Clock, which is abnormal. Most of the time you're only playing one, sometimes two, uh, because it is searchable. However, I do like the three Ku Clock. It gives you access to a play going second a lot more often because of the, uh, you know, if you draw a Chandelier or a Stovey Torby alongside the Ku Clock, you're able to actually set up your combo more efficiently and potentially actually interact interact with your opponent, which is nice. Uh, next up, of course, we're playing three Stovey Torvi, three Chandelier, pretty standard at this point. We're playing three Ariana, which is also pretty nice. And then we are playing one Lovely, as well as three Lady. Uh, again, most of this is just to give us the biggest amount of chance going second to actually have a play, such as the Ku Clock and Lady play, or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Then we are also playing the two welcome labyrinth, the triple welcome and, or the, the, sorry, the double welcome, the triple big welcome, and the one labyrinth labyrinth. As for the rest of the cards, we are playing triple maxi, triple ash blossom, one Nibiru, which has come up a couple of times, but it's honestly not all that big of a deal, uh, but it is nice to have just in case your opponent tries to take the maxi challenge, you can then Nibiru them. Uh, then of course we have one Mutora and one Keldo as discard fodder for the labyrinths. Uh, or for the uh, Stovey Torby and Chandelier. Now, notably, these these aren't all that great at the moment, um, but they are very, very good against Pearly, which I think is why they're seeing play. Just being able to go like, cool, I'm going to go like pitch my uh, my Stovey Torby as well as a Keldo or a Mudora, and then if your opponent decides to go and like activate your, uh, or the, uh, the Pearlily or something like that to try and... Um, uh, Xe summon, you can then just shuffle away the spell and prevent them from actually getting that Xe summon. So it's nice. Uh, then, of course, we're playing the two pot of extra. Obviously, this will be at one, but it wasn't at one in the Duelist Cup, so we're trying it this way. And then the one Prosperity, one Dimensional Barrier, Triple Infit, and one Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon as our normal traps that are not the welcomes. And then one Skill Drain, of course. Uh, now, the extra isn't exactly the same as you can see here. They are playing two Chaos Angel, and they aren't playing, I believe it is the uh, Phoenix, but I am not going to crap the second Chaos Angel. It came up a, cup, a couple of times where it would have been nice to have a Chaos Angel, but honestly, it almost never mattered. Um, but they're playing one Baron, one Chaos Angel. Gigantic, Downard, Baguska. Uh, Gigantic isn't in, in here because you can technically make it with a, like, a Stovey Torby or... Uh, and an Ausa or something all along those lines. Um, so it's not like technically bad or like technically difficult to make. Uh, and then it's just a big beater to go into like down at Zeus stuff. Um, also, Rise Heart is here. Again, for similar things, going like Ausa, steal a Fenrir in order to go into your Rise Heart after they activate their Shangri Era or something along those lines. Um, or Dark to like steal in a Rise Heart to go into Zeus. Um, so like there are things there. We have Elf. Uh, and then triple Muckracker. Uh, Muckracker is just like the only one that you actually realistically are going to summon most of the time. Uh, and so because of that, if you go for Pot of extra, Banishing Six, you're more likely to still have a Muckracker. Um, so that's it for the list. Let's hop into the duels and show you how this deck performs. All right, so here we are going second, and let's see what we can accomplish. Now we do have Max C, which is fun. My opponent is going to reveal that they are on tier limit. Uh, they're going to grab the um, Rhino Heart, then go for the Sheeran. I'm going to go for the Maxi, obviously. It kind of does shut them down, but um, they do get to go and activate the, the Tier Cash. They're going to go and mill a uh, a Crime, which is pretty good. Uh, but luckily, we drew into Chandelier, which is actually very nice. Um, so we're going to go for Chandelier and then just special summon the Lady here. And we know the set card is most likely Crime. Um, so what I'm actually going to end up doing is we're just going to go and set the Big Welcome. And then we're going to, since we had the Big Welcome in hand as well, we're going to just bounce that Crime and back to their hand. Now, I could have bounced the Tier Limit Sheeran as well, but uh, I'm not going to OTK, so I think bouncing the Crime is a little bit better uh, because it forces the Sheeran to go to Grave. But, I mean, Maxi, you gotta love it, right? <laughs> We're just going to go to the battle here and walk over the opponent, uh, opponent's monster. Then, in the battle phase, we are going to activate the Big Welcome here in order to bounce our uh, Lady, but also go for the Ariana. Now, I know you're probably asking why go for the Ariana. 
Well, because I saw this line. We're going to go for the Ku Clock here. We're going to grab it up to, uh, or into hand. Then we're going to go for the Ku Clock. Then we're going to pitch the Maxi. Yes, I did just pitch the Maxi. But that's because now we get to go for the Ku Clock line uh, with the Welcome Labyrinth as well. So we're going to go for the Welcome Labyrinth to deal as much damage as we possibly can while also getting Lovely on our field. They're going to affect Valor or Lovely so that we can't get back the Welcome. But I'm like, that's fine. We're just going to special summon the Lady and pass back. Uh, now we have the Skill Drain. We have the Infip and we have the Dimensional Barrier, which again is kind of crazy but um my opponent has four cards in hand let's see what they can do they're going to start out with the grief they're going to send to graveyard the happiness now obviously we do have the dimensional barrier which we are of course going to activate now they don't chain to the lady here uh or to the um dimensional barrier the snow they decided to chain after i activate the lady which is kind of odd but now i just get to room a karma cannon and uh, they can't really do anything. So they're going to go for the snow. I'm actually going to infip this because I'm like, well, I actually really do want this lovely. Um, but yeah, they're going to go for the Destrudo. And interesting thing, I know Destrudo is going to end up on the field, but it does require the level to be known uh, or the level of the snow to be known to modulate its level. And if they end up having an additional monster on their side of the field, even though they haven't used their normal, and I know that they have the Rhino Heart in hand, I think it's better if they just end up with like a Destrudo on their field. Also, if they summon the, the Destrudo, I can pop it with Lovely after bouncing it with, or after bouncing Snow with a Big Welcome, and then it goes back to the bottom of the deck, right? And then they just have the, um, the one Rhino Heart, and that's not really gonna do anything because they're under Dimensional Barrier, so that's why I go for this play. Um, anyway, we're gonna pop some cards and go plus four because, of course, that's Labyrinth, baby. And, uh, yeah, pop the card, and they concede. Good game. All right, and here we are going first this time. And uh, we're going to start out here with the normal summon of the Ariana. We're going to grab to the hand the Ku Clock because, yeah, we do want to actually be able to activate the Ku Clock. We're going to send the Stovi Torby and the Keldo uh, in order to go for the big welcome here. Uh, they have a Maxi in their hand, so I'm going to... Uh, this is this is kind of why we go for this play. Uh, not really. We would have always gone for this play. But now we get to chain the lady because they're trying to prevent the Ku Clock from special summoning. I'm just going to add it back to hand. Um, and now we get to go for the big welcome while also setting a destructive to a Karma Cannon. We're also going to bounce at the Ariana back to hand and go for the lovely and reveal that they are on Sky Striker. Cool. Um, we're going to set the big welcome and now we have the destructive and the big welcome while also having Ku Clock in our hand, which is pretty nice. They're going to go for the upstart, and like, that's fine. They're going to go for the reinforcements, which is fine, except for the fact that you have three spells, which is not allowed. So we're going to go for the Keldo here and just shuffle back all three of those and prevent them from having three spells. They're going to normal summon the Ray and then special summon the Rose, and then we're going to go for the big welcome. Now, notably, they can't chain to the big welcome effect, so we get to go for the free lady here. Um, they can't chain because of, uh, unless they had a spell or trap effect. Uh, in their hand that was activatable there. Uh, they can't chain because a monster effect is not activatable under the Lovely's protection while I, uh, when I activate a uh, normal trap. So we bounce the Lady after setting a Welcome Birth, or a Welcome Labyrinth, uh, and then we go for the Ariana, the uh, the Lovely, as well as the Stovey Torby in our grave. I'm going to rip a card out of their hand because I'm not really scared about these two monsters or what they could do because of the destructive Jeruma Karma Cannon. Uh, and then we also get to search another card, which I believe I searched the Chandelier. Uh, so we're going to go for the Chandelier, pitching the Mudora, setting a big welcome, and then they go to the battle phase. We're going to go for the Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon, sending everything away, and at this point the game is over. My opponent goes to the end phase, I activate the Lady, I activate the Ku Clock, and they just concede. Yeah, the game was well and done. Well and truly done. All right, and here we are once again going second with a pretty decent hand. It's not really anything that does anything right here, but... You know, maybe it'll do something. They're going to go for the Therezia setting the Frenzy. I'm like, that's totally fine. And then, <sighs> Card of Demise. I love Card of Demise. It's such a great card. They're going to activate the Wannabe, which is very funny, and reveal a whole bunch of cards, and they end up setting the uh, Infinite Impermanence. Hold on. Did you see that card? Did you see that? Just keep that in mind. Um, moving on. So yeah, set four pass with Therezia. It seems pretty good. They're going to go and activate the effect in order to special summon out the Zark with the Soul of the Supreme King. We're going to go for Chandelier pitching the Keldo, to the which they will go debunk. That's the card. That, that, yeah. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, out comes Frenzy. Sure. Okay. Out comes Kentrogena. Of course. During the main phase, they're going to banish. I have to negate. Um, cool. Yeah. And out comes Lady. I'm just going to set one and pass. There's not really anything I can do. Wannabe also sends the Infip to the grave. 
so they can't really do anything there. They're gonna go to battle, and uh, remember, they attack with Zark first here. Do keep that in mind. Now, they could have literally just walked over with Kentrogena because it's 2,900 defense instead of 3,000, but alas, they decided to not do that. Which ends up not mattering in the long run, but it could have. They're gonna go for the Chaos Angel here, and uh, I just let them banish the skill drain. It's not really gonna do anything. Yes, it could have negated the effect of the Chaos Angel, but honestly, I don't really care. I really more so need to draw like an Ariana and have it be live, or draw something like a big welcome or a welcome labyrinth. Uh, they're gonna set one and pass, and Soul of the Supreme King shuffles back the Zark, which is pretty nice. And of course, I top deck the Ariana. They're gonna just immediately go for the second one. I don't know why we decided to not wait here, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna normal summon the Ariana, because I'm just better, and end up drawing the Ariana, and go for the Big Welcome. Not really a whole lot more that I can do here, but Big Welcome is very strong, and uh, it is technically an out to Chaos Angel, just not this turn. We're gonna go for the Big Welcome at this juncture, in order to go for the Lovely Labyrinth. Now, this allows me to bounce back the Ariana, which then triggers the Lovely, to then pop the Zark. We also get to go for the Chandelier here, to add it back to hand as well. So that's pretty nice. Now, also, Zark has an effect. Did you know that Zark has an effect? It puts itself back in the, into the Pendulum Zone. I didn't know this. Uh, but also, the Pendulum effect is actually pretty annoying. Once per turn, when a card is added from the main deck to the opponent's hand, you can destroy that card, which is pretty frustrating because we did just put the Ariana back. So I decide, hey, I've actually read this card. I just did, and we're going to go for the Chandelier to set Welcome. Now, the reason I don't set a Big Welcome is because I do need the Graveyard effect of Big Welcome, so it's just better to go for the Welcome Labyrinth. We're going to Special Summon it during the draw phase for the Lady here, um, because we already have the Lovely in Grave. We can't really do anything about that. So we're just going to shuffle away the uh, the Chaos Angel, and hopefully we win this game. I, I mean, I do not know how we won this game. They debunked me, which was wild and super effective. Uh, but alas, there you go. Labyrinth, the better deck. Good game. Just top deck Ariana, that's really what it was. All right, and here we are once again going up first with a pretty decent hand. So we're gonna start off here with the Ariana Normal Summon. We're gonna search out the Lady here because uh, we just want to special summon it so that we can activate this Kook Lock, which then allows me to get Baldraked. What the heck? Okay, don't know why we're Baldraking here instead of chaining to the Lady, but I guess we're just bad. Oh, it doesn't matter because we have the big welcome. Well, okay, they're gonna pass, or we're gonna pass because we get Ash. Not really a whole lot we can do there, but I still think it's pretty good. They're gonna go. go they're gonna go for the um, the quick launch, and we're gonna go for the welcome labyrinth and chaining lady because I guess they decided to not activate the tracer effect here. Um, I, that's probably correct, but now I do get the free imperm, which is pretty nice. We're gonna go for the lovely here and bounce back the Ariana. Oh, sorry, no, uh, that's just the regular welcome. They're gonna go for the chaos angel, and I'm like that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to bounce the Lovely back to my hand, which ends up allowing me to draw, and we draw Ariana, or we draw the Nibiru off of the Ariana. They normal summon the Rocket Recharger, and I go, okay, there's probably not a whole lot that they can, that they can do if I Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon, unless they see one of the baby Chaos Angels, or, or Chaos um, Dragons. They end up seeing a Bestial, which is fine. It's not really that big of a deal, but they do get to walk up with the Ariana, which could matter. Uh, but yeah. We still have the Nibiru if they were able to combo off, so I'm feeling pretty good here. We draw into Ariana because I'm just better, and we're going to normal summon that to grab up the Stoby Torby. We're then going to flip up the Lady and just walk over the Chaos Angel. I could have kept potentially the Chaos Angel and walked over something like the, um, uh, what is this guy? Rocket Recharger, which may have been a better option overall, but I think it's fine. We're going to go for the Muckracker here and then activate the effect of the Muckracker and realize I should have activated first the Stoby Torby because I forget that it targets and I wanted to get the Lovely onto my field, which was not what I did. Uh, so I'm just going to pitch it to the graveyard in order to summon the Lady and then I'm going to go for the uh, pitch of Nibiru in order to go for the Big Welcome. Is this the correct play? Uh, probably not, but they are also just as bad as me because they didn't activate Beast in the main phase. If you don't know, Branded Beast specifically requires you to activate this in the main phase. Do keep that in mind. We're going to go for the big welcome here and activate the effect, chaining to the uh, lady in order to set a card. That's what that's what we're doing. Um, but we're doing this in the draw phase to specifically play around that main phase effect activation of the beast. And uh, I don't really know what I want to pop here off of the lovely. Uh, so I do think for a while, and I decide ultimately to pop the... Um, the recharger we're also going to set a few more cards uh, i decide on the recharger here because i'm like okay realistically right i'm not as worried about them drawing a normal summon uh but 
the recharger does allow them to get to the field spell and that field spell could then give them a special summon of specifically the rocket tracer which i really don't want uh so i'm like okay i there are like four good cards that i could pop here uh, all four of these are good options um but yeah recharger was the one that i ultimately chose maybe i should have popped a beast maybe that would have been the better idea uh but didn't matter they normal summon the safer uh, I'm just going to negate with the Imperm, because I know that Safer is not going to be activatable if they end up, um, or uh, if it's negated with Imperm. So at the very least, they can't grab their Chaos, uh, their Chaos Dragon, which is pretty nice. They're going to go for the Striker Dragon, grab up the Boot Sector launch, and then they're going to activate the Boot Sector launch, to which I will then chain my uh, Sovi Torby in order to set the uh, the big welcome from Grave, that's or from Deck, that's the last one. But the reason I do this is because uh, it basically means that they can only special summon one monster from Grave, uh, or one rocket monster from Grave, because of the uh, the Boot Sector launch effect. So I'm like, oh cool, I'll just play around that. And then they go for the the Bestial Rebellion. I'm like, yeah, Saber, it's just really, really strong. Out comes the Druid Swarm. Special, special summon the Druid. Why are we do what? What? Oh, right, because... Uh, why would we not have just activated the Boot Sector launch to special summon the Tracer without having to utilize the Striker effect? We could have used that Striker effect to grab up the Recharger to potentially do... It's fine. It's fine. They're a bad Dragon Link player. It rewards me. Um, they go for, quite frankly, the strangest line I've ever seen. They go pop with Rocket Tracer, special summon Rocket Synchron, which is, I guess, the only target because Recharger is in Grave, and go into Triple Burst. Okay. Well, um, I'm feeling pretty good now. We have the big welcome. We have two welcomes, as well as uh, a pretty full grave. Uh, not, not actually, but um, it's pretty decent. We're going to go for the big welcome here, and then we're going to chain the welcome labyrinth, because I know that my opponent doesn't really have anything. And we do have the maxi for the special summon of their weekend monster. We're going to go for the Ariana here, which is just going to be bounced to the hand. And we're going to summon out the lovely from the grave. We're going to bounce the Ariana to hand and activate the lovely effect, and they're going to chain the... Uh, the regain. I'm like, that's totally fine. We're going to go for the maxi, just to draw a card, just because I don't want it in my hand, because it's not going to be all that useful. They are going to special summon out to the Druid Swarm, though, but again, I don't really care, because we're just going to immediately pop out that uh, Branded Beast, which is the only real way that they have the Druid Swarm be a threat, right? Out comes the Ariana, because we bounced it. Out comes the Chandelier, we're going to activate the Chandelier, and setting the labyrinth labyrinth which is pretty good here uh we're just going to walk into the uh, uh the, the, the uh, triple burst because again we made that for some reason and then just pass the turn we have destructive during a karma cannon as well as welcome labyrinth and they immediately fire the sarnir in the draw phase which is very funny but uh luckily we have a shuffler so i'm going to shuffle away three of the cards now i do make a bit of a mistake i target the recharger i don't know what i was thinking here obviously it's target the lobelion i I was like, oh, I have three shuffles. Let me shuffle back one of my cards and then two of theirs. And then I was like, oh, I actually kind of want to shuffle back this big Welcome Labyrinth so that I have it as a target for my discards uh, off of like Chandelier and the like. Um, and then I just forgot that, oh, I need to target the Bissiel Nubelion, but it's, it's fine. Uh, I ended up doing something a bit different to make it work anyway. We're gonna go for the Welcome Labyrinth here because it's gonna allow me to pop up the Regained, which is important. So we're going to pop the Regained and Special Summon the Lady, and then we are going to bounce to the hand that drew a Swarm. Uh, then we're going to try and pop a card, as well as um, search a card. Uh, out comes the Welcome Labyrinth as well, since a card was bounced back to the hand. And of course, of course they chain the Bestial drew a Swarm. Uh, this is a play, that's for certain, and I'll show you why it's not very good. We know the Sauron here in hand, right? Out comes the Bestial drew a Swarm. They want to keep this on field. However, this card, notably, doesn't target. Do you want to know why? Away goes the Druid Swarm. Away goes my lovely. That's totally fine. That doesn't accomplish anything. My opponent concedes. I still have access to a big welcome to special summon that card back. And I honestly don't need it at this point. It's probably just a dead card anyway. So <laughs> good game. All right. We're back with the deck. And in all honesty, I'm not too keen on this style of deck. I think I would rather play things like Gamma or what have you. Um, but more specifically, I think I would cut these for Fenrir. And the reason for that, uh, simply put, is Fenrir also replaces itself while also being a threat on the board, um, as well as just being like a really, really powerful card. You're not really switching anything other than those two. I think that would be just better in general. Yes, the Mudora and the Keldo are nice, and don't get me wrong, they're very strong against very specific strategies, like for example, Pearly and Dragon Link, but honestly, it's not really that big of a deal. Also, Triple Ku Clock is 
good and all, but again, I'd rather see this as like Gamma um, or what have you. So maybe take out these two and a Nibiru for the Gamma line or what have you. But honestly, the deck is still very good. It's very consistent. It's able to see the cards that it needs to see very frequently. And the extra deck is so loose that you could play whatever you want in there realistically. Uh, I did actually like having the third lady, but I'd still probably cut it again for like a Gamma package or what have you. Uh, but yeah, all in all, still a good deck. I do thoroughly enjoy it, and it was pretty successful. Is it better for climbing ranks than maybe a different list? Probably not. Uh, especially with the amount of stun running around, I think Fenrir is uh, particularly good, as well as things like Harpy's Feather Duster and the like. Um, so, there you go. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope that you guys did indeed enjoy it. If you did, I like it very much. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh!, then just be sure to subscribe. And anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and remember to always... Stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.